praise the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Welcome to Talking on Purpose with Tori, the podcast and internet show. Thank you for being here on this Wednesday, September 30th. It is the last day of September. It is 7.30 a.m. And I'm going to share this to my other pages and to my groups and just give me a moment. And as you are coming in, I hope that you will share this as well. Let me know how you're doing this morning. Give me a heart, a thumbs up, a smiley face, or just let us know how God is working in your life and what you plan to do today. What is on your agenda? Okay, this is shared. All right. This week is a little different in how I am giving you information because of a encounter. I'm calling it an encounter at this point, but an encounter I had within my prayer time and meditation and asking God, not only what's next, but what can I do? What more can I do? And I was hit with some very, um, I was hit with some very stark truths and how I had become somewhat of how I had become, let me just, hmm, how I had become a false teacher how I was being a prosperity coach, why I was devaluing the gospel itself in relation to what we needed to do as far as the clarifying, organizing, and preparing, even though I was saying it with in relation to God. Like that was the point. However, excuse me, however, it was in it was not intentional at that time, but now that I have learned and I have seen the error and I have repented and I'm asking your forgiveness just as I did or have done all this week, asking your forgiveness, there are so many more factors to consider when sharing content with the public. My point is I want to do a better job of clarifying, organizing, preparing your purpose, which is already in you, and letting you know that we are to copy, we are to copy and imitate Christ. Give me a moment. Let us pray. Let us pray. Uh, Father, we thank you. We thank you for this time here. We thank you for your your joy, your comfort, your wisdom, your understanding, your patience, your long suffering of us. Lord, I'm grateful that you have brought me to this place and this space and this time that I can realize the responsibility I have of not only presenting your word, but how we can incorporate everything into our daily lives. Lord, you are the focus. You are the center of the word of God. It is all about you. It points to you. And as we read and gain more understanding through your Holy Spirit, we can live a life that glorifies you. Lord, help us to do better, to be the humans that glorify you, who honor you, and give you thanks for the incredible gifts that you have already given. In your name I pray, amen. So this has been an emotional couple of weeks for me. And while I was wrestling through and trying to do more, what else can I do? How else can I impact, inspire, and otherwise create a, a positive message to hopefully throw at something that maybe someone else was going to dive into and perhaps they scrolled and they saw my video and they paused and stopped and maybe that stopped them from doing something else. The goal is always to get you to go back and read the word and create your intimate relationship with God, to talk to God, to pray and meditate and seek his guidance and his will, because that's what that's what's going to be done. We can rebel and be against it, or we can choose to follow him. Does that mean we will be perfect? No, we will not be perfect, but God will see that we are obediently following, that we are wanting and desiring to be with him. We are his sheep, we know his voice, and we will move 
as he moves. And that's what's happening now, which takes me to, I'm trying to stay on point here. It takes me to our announcement as far as how we are going to be moving going forward. And right there, yes, okay. We are moving Talking On Purpose with Tori, the podcast and internet show to Tuesdays. The audio only podcast will be available at 4 a.m. on demand and ready to listen when your schedule allows. The internet show, so Talking On Purpose with Tori, the internet show will be available live here on Facebook at 7.30 a.m., also on Tuesdays. So please set your reminders to be notified on your favorite platforms. Make sure you're following our Facebook page. I will share it to my personal page as well as to the Our Given Purpose page. So the question is, why? Why the change? What happened? I explained a lot of this already in Our Given Purpose, the podcast, and also in the audio only version of this, it comes down to prosperity preaching. And I was becoming a prosperity coach. Prosperity preaching isn't just about the health and wealth ministry. It isn't about the name it, claim it, or not only about, I should say. It's not only about those things, but it also encompasses patriotism, happiness, miracles, dreams, ideas, that type of thing that makes it a form of idolatry, which is to elevate the gift over the giver. So those dreams, those miracles, those the patriotism, the happiness, all of those become the celebrated gift and not the adoration of the giver. And I was getting away from how God is working in our lives within the coaching simply because I was telling you that you needed to plan, that you needed to do these things, not necessarily for you to have life in eternity with our Father, but just to get through your days. And I needed to be more clear about why we needed to set up our days, why we needed to make sure that we were growing in wisdom spiritual growth, emotional growth, and maturity, why that was so important. It was not simply to allow you to get into heaven or to set you up for success. I shared, and I'm going to share it here as well, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 24 through 28. You see, the Apostle Paul, this is just one example. The Apostle Paul summarized his life. He summarized the things that he went through as he was spreading the gospel. He was preaching the good news. And when we talk about living our best life, living the greatest life now, having all the things that our heart desires now, it started to bother me. And I started to think about, wait, If I live my best life now, like this is the best, this is the awesomeness, then of course the expectation for eternity should be even greater. But am I limiting God with asking, I want to live my best life now. I want everything now. I started to wonder then, what treasures am I storing in heaven if I want to be comfortable at peace and happy and living my best life. But joy comes from knowing God. It comes from having a real and right relationship with him. You can experience incredible joy in the midst of the worst circumstances. You will still celebrate and be happy because you know that there is another step. There is another life. There is more to come. This temporary suffering will end. So let me read. Let's read together 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 24 through 28. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the 40 lashes less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A day and a night I was adrift at sea, 
on frequent journeys in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardship, through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure, and apart from other things, there is the daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches. The Apostle Paul shares several times in the New Testament why he always found joy in the suffering for Christ. And I want to add a few more scripture passages for you to read over, ponder, meditate, and ask God for his guidance. I'm going to list them, but let's read through them now. Acts chapter 5, verse 41. The apostles left the high council rejoicing that God had counted them worthy to suffer disgrace for the name of Jesus. Romans 5, 3. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. 2 Corinthians 12.10 That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Colossians chapter 1, verses 11 and 12 we also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power, so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. There is a list of all the scriptures I just read. And also the context is the other part. Of course, the um, with Acts and with Romans, we're talking about a lot of laws and things that are being changed. So there is something else happening. But the point I would love for you to take away from this and what has pricked my heart and really opened my eyes to fully understanding what my role is within the kingdom of God, what my role is as a mother, as a wife, as a, as a sister, as an aunt, as a woman of God, what am I supposed to do? How do I use this platform to glorify and send others to Christ to let you know that I am not worthy to untie the shoes, but there is someone who is coming back who is greater than anything that we can attempt to worship here. He is coming back. There is, we have been promised. I pray that as you read, that you will insert Christ into the story, insert God into the context as the center of it. And as you do, I believe your perspective will shift. Even though there were people in the Bible, there were people, they had lives, stuff happened to them. They were following God. When we desire to imitate the, the Davids and the Jobs and the Samsons or the Hannahs, the Elizabeths, the Priscillas or the Jehoshebas or the Jehoshebas, 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 Hmm. Always. But when we desire to follow the people and mimic our lives and even Paul, when we desire to do that, we are automatically lowering our standards because we are not following God as they were. And I believe that each of them have stated, I know Paul has as well, if I, leave, if I live my life the way I live it, I pray that it is to his glory, but to make sure you are pointing, he wants us to follow God and not him. And that was the message for the majority of the apostles and the women of the Bible. 
So that is why I need to change and shift and move as God is directing me to. And I'm grateful that he did this gently. It could have been a completely humiliating experience, but he chose to do it in a manner that was just ever so kind, ever so filled with mercy. And I am grateful for that. And I'm being obedient and doing his will as opposed to what fits my schedule and what I think should happen because everything to his glory. Let's close today. I want to read as I did on the podcast, Ephesians chapter one, verses three through 14, and leave that as a prayer. I thank you for being here. I thank you for your um, your patience, for your kindness, and for following this page. Uh, please visit www.OurGivenPurpose.com for all the links. Please join the newly created Talking on Purpose with Tori, the podcast and internet show Facebook group page. All of those links will be on the website, but I thank you. I pray you have a fantastic day, that you seek God for everything that you are doing, and May you be blessed in all that you do. May you know that our God is sovereign and we do not have to fear man. He is not the master. Humans are not our masters. God is our Alpha and Omega. He is complete. He has the authority. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 through 14. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. God has now revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ, which is to fulfill his own good plan. And this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for he chose us in advance and he makes everything work out according to his plan. God's purpose was that we Jews, who were the first to trust in Christ, would bring praise and glory to God. And now, you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. Thank you for your time. That was Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 through 14. Thank you.